Oh, you guys can't hear me. I'm talking and you can't hear me. That's so awesome. I love it. Well, we'll start that again. Hi, everyone. It's Sunday. Glad to see you all. <laughs> this is our weekly board meeting. This is Jojo Bennington. Glad to see all of your happy faces. Let's see. Miss Jenny Rose, good to see you. Nick, I know I saw you pop in. Happy birthday, brother. I don't know where you are right now, but maybe you're Oh, there you are. I see you. Wearing, wearing my uh, Pat's PJs for Vinny. Oh, I'm sure he appreciates that. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nicholas. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. To you. Yay. I love that voice. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. Awesome. All right, so let's start it off with some gratitudes, wins, celebrations. Whoop, whoops. Who's got some celebrations going on? I do. So um, I went and met with a friend who I haven't spoken to. I haven't seen her physically in probably five or six years. Um, and she messaged me out of the blue and asked to meet with her because both her and her husband have been watching my Facebook page and want to get started. Um, and it was, I also had another, a new friend who messaged me and then a third stranger who's messaged me as well. And so I'm taking it as um, the universe telling me to quit being a freaking baby and get my ass in gear. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it just goes to show that this uh, that no matter where we are, people need this, and we just need to continue to do what we do because there are so many lives to bless that if we're silent, then they don't benefit from that. So thank you, universe, for telling me to stop being lazy. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question because that's a great celebration, but let, let's, let's look into that a little bit. Let's, let's, let's delve in. Ready? Okay. So sure. when you, when you're in that space of feeling bad about what's going on or somebody decides to stop using the shake or, you know, we, we have all of those things that give us those wall kicking moments at those moments, who are we thinking about? Oh, it's totally being selfish. Mm. Yes. And it's not about the other person. And, and when we know there's so many people out there to help and assist and um, that when we just are there and open for what's to come and we make it not about us, what flows to us. It's amazing, right? Abundance. <laughs> Thank you. That's You're so welcome. awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Anyone else want to celebrate? Vinny B? I would like to celebrate our recent sip and sample success. Um, we had a sip and sample on Wednesday. I don't know um, if everybody here knows exactly what the sip and samples are, but the company's been promoting them for, for a while. And basically, you know, it's just a, a thing for people to come over your house and, and, and taste our products. And I will say it was a huge success. We didn't have many... Um, new people show up but we had a lot of associates and the great thing about that was that the associates got to see exactly how this would go and how they could duplicate this in their own home and i think i think that was a success now now from what happens from here on till till the next sip of the sample or at someone's house who knows but right now they're they're going well so i i suggest everybody do sip and samples at your own house and see what happens even if one person shows up you know, it's, it, it's good training. It'll, it'll, it'll help you get accustomed to, to doing things a little bit differently and sharing a little bit differently. Awesome. Thank you. Cynthia, did you have your hand up? I did. <coughs> Piggyback slightly on Anna's. Um, I had a networking event that I just did not want to go to at all. I was very comfy in my bed. I had taken a nap. I did not want to get up and it was only for a few hours, but I made myself go. And as a result, met this awesome woman and she enrolled today on a value pack. So I guess the moral of the story is go do what you don't want to do, <laughs> even if it's just for an hour. 
Mm. That's so good. Well, congratulations for that. And congratulations on your double PIBs this week. So that's rocking. Um, but you know, it's so funny because there was a, one of the guys who used to be a trainer in the company and he would say, do you know why I do 250 pushups every day? Because I don't want to. As soon as I want to start doing them, then I'll switch to something else. But it's always my mind over the matter. That's the difference. And I do find that when I push off things like that, it's so much better when you go, right? So thank you. Jody. Okay, there we go. Unmuted. Hi. Um, so congratulations, first of all, Anna and Cynthia. That's awesome. And congratulations, you guys, on your sip and sample. Very cool. Um, I had a sip and sample here as well. I had my second one on Saturday. Um, and two wins, really. Um, this Saturday, um, I was able to uh, start um, not one of my personally enrolled, but an enrolled of when I personally enrolled uh, to the path of being a consultant. She got her mom enrolled. Her mom was very excited to get started. So that was a great win from that sip and sample. Um, and then the other thing is that um, the sip and sample at my house was really more of like a vendor fair. I had um, like four or five other vendors, but almost all of them are enrolled under me in isogenics. So it was like kind of like spreading the wealth that way. And one of them is a woman who does Norwex, and I don't know if you're familiar with that, so an all-natural cleaning thing. And I just want to tell the quick story of how this happened because it was so out of my comfort zone. And so basically, I saw a post about this magical cloth. I inquired about this magical cloth, and this woman, Deb, responded to my comment on my friend's post. And so, of course, immediately I knew what was going on. And I just said, hey, this is great. Can we take it to a personal message? So we did, and she was telling me about the products, and I was totally interested. And, um, you know, was, she was going to send me samples and more info. And I said, that's great. And Hey, by the way, do you know anybody who's looking to lose weight or gain energy or have healthy aging? And she said, well, who's not? And so we started chatting and the next thing you know, I enrolled her and now enrolled her husband. So that was, uh, it all came out of being very uncomfortable and, and kind of just throwing that question out there. So that worked well. <laughs> mm, we love that. Congratulations. The reverse pitch. That's so cool. I love it. And congratulations on the sip and samples. And um, so as we get into this tonight, I actually, we were talking about sip and samples a little bit. And so we kind of wanted to, how many have done one? I mean, I have. Okay. Jojo. Hey, Chad. Can I just do another quick uh, celebration? The uh of course. Healthy happy hours. We're doing healthy happy hours, which is kind of, I guess, an offshoot of the sip and samples. And I just wanted to shout out and note how appreciative I am for everyone's support, even those people who aren't necessarily coming to them. And this goes from sure sip and samples too. Just the support is huge. You know, you post it on a page and people like it, comment. It's it creates a lot of really good energy so that people want to show up for the event. So whether or not you're going to these, if you see someone who is holding a sip and sample or some type of event, definitely you know like it, comment, because it creates some very positive energy, and we need positive, positive energy these days. I'm sure you guys agree with that. So thank you. Mm, great point, Chad. Thank you. So we wanted to just chat a little bit about some of the successes that we've seen with the Simp and Sample, some of the things that we've learned, maybe some things um, that didn't go as we planned, and maybe we'll do it a little bit different next time. So, um, Jody, do you have some takeaways, like some things that went really great and some things that maybe didn't go so well and you think you should do them differently? Um, I do, yeah. I um the one at my house where I did the multi-vendor, it was really cool, and I, it's going to become an annual thing, but not so much for isogenics. Um, it was very hard for me to actually speak to people about isogenics. Um, people did sample the product, so that was great, but it was definitely far less focused on isogenics. So the takeaway for me was I'm going to do it again because it was great, and I think it's a great opportunity for people who aren't ready to come to something that's super focused on one product um, to get them exposed to the products. As far as my other sip and sample, I going into my next one this Thursday, I need to do a little bit more homework um, as far as exactly how I want to structure it um, because I thought it would be great. It was only going to be a couple of people and I would just start asking them questions about like, okay, so 
you know, what brought you here today? Why were you interested? And it was almost like crickets. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So then they just wanted to hear my story. So I'm the one doing all the talking and I don't want it to be that way. So for me, I want to make sure that I have a, a little bit better plan in place to make sure that I'm not the one doing all the talking, because as we know, it's not about us and we should be listening more than we're talking. So that's my number one takeaway and something I'm going to work on before my next one this Thursday. Mm, so good. So let me ask you, why do you think, was there like a specific reason you think it was hard to talk to people? Cause they were just, were they in the party oh, mode and didn't want to talk about health and you know, at, at mine, at my house, mm -hmm. it was it the, was vendor, the, the vendor, the vendor part. One, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's because I was talking to a few people and the majority of people who were here already were already either customers or associates. Um, but it was hard because if I, you know, for example, my neighbor who is not, that was gracious enough to come by that I feel like avoids me at every chance she gets <laughs> because she doesn't want to talk to me about, you know, this mm -hmm. nutrition. Um, I didn't have a chance to actually talk to her, or even give her a goodie bag because I was talking to somebody else. She was talking to other vendors and she was in and out and had purchased from all the other vendors and was gone before I could really talk to her. So I think it was just sort of that it, it wasn't set up to be a true like launch party it was a sip sample and shop, which again was fun and I'll do it again. But because it wasn't really set up to really talk about isogenics, it was just too easy for people to run away. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess. And that's interesting because we're considering doing the multi-vendor event. We have enough space to yeah. do, you know, five or I six people here great. comfortably. So yeah. I, I will definitely do it again. I just, I would, I would go into it with a little bit of a different mentality and maybe try to set something up a little bit different so I can try to make sure I get everybody. Like I had the sign in, um, to get the door prize and my door prizes mm -hmm. were like, a you know, seasonal shake or a, a sample cup or something like that. So I was at least able to get information and contacts that way. So maybe they have to get like a check mark at every booth or something. Yeah, so, that's what I'm, yeah okay. I think that would be, would be okay. fantastic. And I didn't spend a lot of time at my own table just cause it was my own house. So I was trying to float and all that kind of stuff. Uh, um, bingo. That's a great idea, Liza. You do, um, you have a like a bingo game. They have to go to each thing to get a, or a poker hand. Each each table you get a card. You have five people, right? So whoever ends up with the best poker hand, stuff like that. Yeah, the punch card. All great ideas. Can I chime in there, Jojo? Yeah. Jojo. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just making notes. Great idea, Jody, on it, especially when it's a strictly isogenics event asking people why they're there. That was one thing that was huge for me. I was chatting with Lori Rizzo and she's like, when people show up, ask them, you know, why are you here? Are you here? You know, who's here because they want to get healthier. Who's here because they want to make some extra money. Who's here. You know, if you have wine and beer, who's here, just have a drink on a Wednesday night or whatever night it is. Then you're getting an idea of why they walked in the door. And it was a really it was an aha moment for me when she was sharing this with me because you can set the stage to create the event around the people who are there versus creating the event up front and hope that they grasp onto the info there. You're, you're answering their questions and the dialogue it. And again, the event that you had Jody, it sounds like there was a whole bunch of different companies there, but if it's isogenic strictly, the dialogue, it's almost immediate. It's really a special energy that flows because they start asking questions and then they see when you're sharing the info, they see the energy coming from you and it's not a pressure energy. It's just like, dude, this company has been around 15 years. They're just now hitting a billion in annual sales and we're projected to hit 2 billion in two years. You're just sharing information with them and it's aha and, and it flows when, when they know up front that, you're creating the whole thing around them. It's, it's pretty neat. Right. So great point. Good point. Thank you. We, and what we've been successful at doing is saying, okay, here we all are. We all have a lot of things in common. And so has anybody, you know, ever tried to lose weight and not been able to, has anybody ever lost weight and then gained it back? Has, who sleeps good? Like, and so just kind of asking the questions and having them dialogue together too about um, why they're there. So they get to meet people, um, which is cool. Then. 
You could also do that um, interactively as well, not just have them sit down, but like have everybody stand up and say, okay, so anybody who's ever tried to lose weight, go stand in this corner. And then, okay, so if you've tried, you know, X, Y, and Z, go stand in this corner. So that, that way they're up and they're moving and then they're, they're sort of shuffling around the room as well. Um, and that'll get them sort of excited and right. Cause when you're up and moving, it's better than if you're just sitting there. I was thinking about playing twister and having somebody do that and go, okay, put your right foot on the square. If you ever try to lose weight and that, I mean, just like to have one person do it or to have a couple do it together or, you know, something where you would, where it would not be, you know, unsafe, but just the thought of showing how many places we try to fix our bodies all at once. Sin. So I've done, but well, I didn't, I kind of did a sip and sample before they came out with sip and sample. Um, I had been, I started following Trudy Maples and Tanya Kirkpatrick's um, home part, the way they did their launch parties at Celebration, which is on YouTube. And part of it is like a sip and sample towards the end. And they keep it super simple. They just follow um, a small agenda that they write out and leave in, in front of the room, play a couple of videos, answer some questions. But then the real interaction comes when people start tasting um, the bars and you know any of the, the recipes that, that they made up from the protein shakes and what have you. And um, I really liked that. It, it, it turned out much better for me than like a regular presentation, if you will. So incorporating both their, their way of doing the home party with sampling the products and being interactive with, with the guests. And Jody, I've also, last year I did two um, holiday shopping vendor events, if you will. And the same situation, I really didn't have a whole lot of time to talk to all the people that were coming by. So what I decided to do is I, I raffled off a nine day um, anyone had to fill out their name, phone number, and email address in order to, um, in order to uh, qualify to win. But then I talked to them, you know, just briefly enough to where they would remember me when I called them back. And I just took the list the following week and, you know, started following up with people that way. So I found that when I do those kinds of events, I end up talking more to the vendors than to the people <laughs> that come. Cindy, do you call that a super simple sip and sample? Uh, sure. <laughs> if you can say that 10 times fast. <laughs> well, and even at expos and at almost anywhere else where you have a booth or you have something set up like that, I always end up talking to the vendors more. <laughs> They're the entrepreneurial minded people. They're the ones who are already um, trying to make money. Vinny? What I noticed about our sip and sample, and I'm sure Jojo will go over it in a few minutes what we did. But we did um we did stations. We did like five different stations, and each station was different. Like one station was the bars, and they got to taste those. The station I ran was basically the the holiday sickness station, if you will. But it I I did um I seasonal did ice, survival. That's it, seasonal survival. But I did a ice immune and vitamin C. You know, because people get sick during the during the holidays, and I also did a hangover cure with ionic cleanse and hydrate. But what's great about those is they're interactive stations. So I didn't get into um, any ingredients really for any products. I just discussed briefly with with each one what they kind of did, and then you know I, I had everybody try the the hangover remedy that that I mix up, and everybody liked it. But what I I guess what I'm getting at with this statement is that I was really amazed. As I said, we had mostly people that were already product users and or associates. Um, at, at the sip and sample. So there wasn't very many new people, but I was astonished at how many uh, people had been around isogenics for quite some time, didn't know the benefits of our ice immune or didn't know the benefits of our, of our vitamin C. And, and a few people didn't even know we had vitamin C. They've been in a company four years. So these sip and samples are not only good for, you know, new, new recruits and things like that, but they're also good for associates who don't really pay attention to, to products other than the ones they use. Yes, great point. Thank you. So, I mean, even with the, you know, you having a lot of associates, even if it increases the order basket because everybody chooses to add one more 
item to their cart that's successful or for them to understand a product that's better uh, or a product better than they did before that's it's a cool piece so um, did anybody else notice something that maybe they would do it different next time or something that went really great that you want to tell us that so we can incorporate it into ours I don't have anything like that to share. So I've, I've done one sip and sample. I have another one scheduled for this Saturday and then the one the following week. Um, so I had a friend show up because she was coming to help me bring all the stuff. And then the person um, at the manager at my clubhouse, she was already there. So it was sort of by default that she was there. And, I, and so nobody else showed up, but I still did the presentation. Um, and so I asked them if they wouldn't mind my basically practicing on them. And I think that took a little bit of the nervousness out that I would have felt otherwise had there been more people. Um, but the good thing is, is that they're both going to enroll um, with um, and, or, and start ordering the product. So the point of that is, is was it successful? No, I still got to practice. Yes. And I did, you know, the, the shakes and sample the bars and stuff like that. But it was still good practice. So even if nobody shows, I highly encourage you to go ahead and do it anyway, so that you're getting, because the more, it's just like any other muscle, the more and more you flex it, the easier it's gonna get, so. Great point. As with any meeting, right? Anytime we schedule and people don't show, the best thing we can do is still follow through and practice, because and practicing just helps us make that skill one step better. So thanks for sharing what you shared, Jody. Um, we so we did five stations. So we did kind of an opening where we, you know, I said, look, we could stand and talk about biology and um, ingredients, and I could tell you all about soil, and we could do all this big, you know, science talk. And if you guys want to do that, then that's fine. Or do you want to like run around the house and taste stuff and have fun? And you know, who wants to do what? Do you want to do science, or you want to like run around and have fun? So obviously, nobody wanted to sit around and talk science. Everybody wanted to run around and have fun. I gave them the option because what if they all were scientists and that's what they wanted to talk about? So uh, I said, okay, but we did a little bit of an opening and everybody had a name tag on and they had a little number on their name tag and whatever number that was there, that's the station they were supposed to start at. So not everybody started at the same station. They had seven minutes at the station and we did shakes. Then we did snacks that had whey thins and bars. Then we did the seasonal survival. We did a performance line with all of the AMP products. We cut up bars so they can taste them. We also made coffee and showed e-shots. And so on the all on the energy line. And then we also did a healthy aging station where we showed a little two minute video clip about product B and explained more about telling their support. So we did five stations and then so seven minutes and then we would ring this really obnoxious bell and give everybody two minutes to move and so everybody would move to the next station and so it was a constant energy flow and then every after every um two rounds we would stop and do a raffle and give something away in between and then afterwards we did all that we also made um protein brownies and protein cookies and little stuff and so we had everything so afterwards we then we showed what we could do with the things that we just sampled and so we and then everybody had an opportunity to taste all of that we played a game where we rolled dice and they either won an envelope and got a prize or they um agreed to book a sip and sample at their house so we were thinking of everybody moving forward and creating them at their house and then we did a close and invited everybody to join us and explained the good, better, best and um, how to president's pack set up. And everybody, t I mean, we've gotten great feedback. There's probably a few things that we would do a little bit differently and maybe we wouldn't make so many. I mean, we made a ton of goodies and we probably won't do so much tasting. But if somebody um, wanted to do that on a small level, say they're at their own house, they could, you know, make five stations on their counter or do it that way. I mean, there's lots of ways that you could do it just individually. But Cynthia, I do like the thought of having the video first because all a lot of that explanation 
gets taken away that we don't necessarily have to do afterwards because a lot of it's already explained. So you do much less talking, yes. Mm -hmm. And let the tools don't be a tool, use the tool. Right. And so what was cool is that at each station we did have somebody who was very versed at whatever they were doing. So they could you know, give a sample. Why is the coffee different? Why is the shake different? Why, you know, because those are the things that people want to know. And it seemed like it went really well. So this week, because we're doing one again this week, we're considering, you know, basically parking everybody at the counter and talking about stuff and making brownies while we do it. So like actually, like a, you know, how you do a Tupperware party or a Pampered Chef party with the, where you make the food while you're doing it. But any suggestions and anybody that feels like they have ideas, I would appreciate you to throw them out. And I will just say this, you know, it's not a question of, hey, do you want to do one? It's when are you booking yours? Because this is what's going to happen, is that the people who came, we're going to have, we have six sip and samples booked from our first one. So we're moving from this into six other houses and then they're going to invite people that we don't know and their people that we don't know. We hope then that moves on to their people. And they, so we, we create a wave by doing that. And even if we did a couple of week, I'd be totally good with that. I don't want to be an every night party girl, but um, I would totally do a couple of week. Hey, Jojo, real quick. Um, one of the things that I, I do at All of Mine is, along with the video, I'll do a quiz. So I have a quiz, so when they watch it, I already have it all, like, I have like 10 questions and then there's a blank. And so I tell them that they need to take notes and listen because then whoever gets all of them right gets a prize. Mm -hmm. And they get so into it. And then we go through each question and then they answer that. So then again, like Cynthia was saying, I use the tool. That's like the first thing we do. And then they answer all those questions. And then we talk a little bit about all the answers, you know, because it's obviously mm -hmm. all related. And then we do the sample and stuff. So that's just kind of the standard thing that I just do. Great idea. I love yeah. that. It what, oh, and we also, we had a travel card. So on the travel card, it had their health goals and mm -hmm. then um, notes from each station, products that they made, you know, like on the side that they made sure they wanted to, wanted to order. And so we had all of that on the travel card as they so went from station to station, they could make notes and do that. And um, we did at the end get everybody together and anybody we would go, okay, what'd you learn that you didn't know? And like we would throw out ice of delights and stuff to somebody who learned something that they didn't know and share that with everyone. But I love the quiz idea. So I'll, I'll post that in files. Okay. Hey Jojo, did you print the catalog? No, we didn't. Do you feel like that would have been beneficial? Cause I was one thing I was thinking of is going to get some like photo paper. I don't know. Like I feel like, for me, I like to have something to flip through and like make notes on. I don't know. We um, had the computer set up and we flipped through it and showed people, but I agree that having it, I think once people saw how interactive it, it was, they thought how cool that was. And we're like, look, click on the little ice guy, you know, so that was all those cool little pieces that are built into the catalog that you sort of miss the flow having it printed, but I do totally agree that it could be beneficial to have a hard copy because then they could take that with them. You know, like mm -hmm. that's one thing that I love when I go to like, let's say a pampered chef party. I love to, <laughs> I love to take that catalog with me. Like that's something that for me, like as a, somebody that's coming in as a, a new customer to have, like I, I even save all of our product catalogs when I get them in the mail. Like I just, I, I don't mm -hmm. know. No. And I agree. And I totally save ours my only concern would be if somebody tried to print up a bunch of those in color, it cost a little bit of money to do that. Um, and so even though we did this on a grand scale and we had a huge ton of samples, we want to be able to also show how to do this on a budget where people don't feel like they have to spend this huge amount of money. Um, but having one available 
and maybe not letting them take it, maybe having one available so they can touch it and then showing them how to access it online. So it's something that could be reused. I could totally see that. And I think the s'mores bars are gone, right guys? Did I see that today? Yeah. So we did sample everything. Like I made brownies out of the pumpkin spice and I made brownies out of the chocolate mint. And um, we also cut up the s'mores bars, but we only did that because you could still get them. So as soon as they sell out, we're not going to, we're not going to move that forward. The fast fact sheets. That's to do like at each station. I yeah. had the product fast facts printed and available okay. at my table and I had a couple extra copies. And so, you know, I had not everybody was going to take one, but you know, one or two people took the product fast facts and one or two people took a catalog. So, you know, I didn't have like hundreds available, but I at least had some so that I could use it as a tool when talking to people. But that way for that person who did want to take something and flip, Mm -hmm. The fast facts to me almost are better because it has some, it has more information. I feel like about each individual product. Mm -hmm. um, I also had little brochures available, like the, the little lookbooks. I had multiple copies of that available for people to take. I had, uh, I did goodie bags and I, in the goodie bag, I did a, um, hydrate stick and e-shot and ice delight. I had my business card. And then I also did the little how, why we cleanse brochure. So Ooh. everybody went home with that. That I thought that, and I just realized that that I think is key because it has so much good information, broad spectrum of our whole system without getting into like details of products that everybody went home with that. Everybody got a goodie bag and mm -hmm. the goodie bags didn't cost me very much. And another party I did, I did a rejuvity sampler because it was all mm -hmm. going to be women instead of doing the e-shot. Um, and that seemed to help and work really well as well. Great idea. I love that. And we actually made up the little rejuvity jars that they showed on the catalog and we made up some, a bunch of shakes. And so we just raffled those off as prices as we went through or if somebody mm -hmm. did something or whatever, we handed those out as, as gifts. Um, and so all great ideas. And it was a lot of fun to do. And we just incorporated because we just invited the city. So we had, you know, leaders from other teams, we brought in everybody from, so we just tried to get as many people here from the city as we could because we really want to be able to watch this branch out. Not that we want to have it at our house every single week, but we would love to be able to move that out. Um, oh, that's a great idea. So Eliza framed the fast facts in the clinical studies. So that's, that's also a really good idea. I'm making notes from all of you guys. Hey, Jojo. So do you know from corporate, are they not going to keep producing those s'mores bars through the holidays? I don't know. I wish I could answer that, but I can't. Um, I was under the impression that everything that was in the holiday uh, in the holiday calendar catalog was allegedly supposed to last until through December, but I wasn't expecting the s'mores bars to run out. Yeah, but, but the, the s'mores bars and the seasonal shakes aren't in the catalog. The only thing that's in the catalog are the um, assorted isodolites. No, they're in, they're in there when you go in to... In the seasonal? They're, they're in the, the catalog? Yeah. The seasonal catalog? Yeah, yeah, now it's a sold out. When you go to that page, it like pops up sold out now. Oh, okay. I guess I missed it or I wasn't focusing on it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought so too, Vinny. I was like, well, they must going to just keep production up because they're putting out a holiday catalog, but I don't know. You know, I, th I thought that as well, but you know, I, who knows? Sometimes demand is a lot higher than you're expecting as a company. You know, that's all I that's all I can say about that. I haven't heard okay. any word whether they have more in reserves or they're making any more. I haven't heard any of that. It's, if we find out anything, yeah, something. let us know. Let know. But as far as now, we haven't heard a, a word on anything. So, who's going to do a sip and sample that doesn't have one already currently planned? Who's got one planned already? Who's got one planned now? I do. Cool. And so anybody who doesn't currently have one planned, who's going to plan one? Awesome. And um, Mona, it'd be a great way for you to meet new people where you're at. <laughs> okay, so I, I can't lie, Georgia. I'm actually going down to Richmond to a different city that I don't know people. And Yay! something that I want to add 
because I figured go to that city and find people or be in DC and find people. But either way, I got to find some people. So there you go. I'm, I'm super excited. Around, I'm actually just jumping in on somebody else's party. You're going to jump in on, on Anna's party? I am. I so really am. I'm going to go make some friends. Very cool. Yeah. Very we love excited. it. We love it. So, um, are we complete there? So I'm, I'm probably going to throw out a challenge and for every time you do a sip and sample, I'm going to put like your name in a raffle and we're going to raffle off some cool thing before Christmas. So I would just say you want to start doing them because we're going to give away some cool stuff. And really, I mean, on the other side, if we're, we're really committed to doing this, then to what a great way to get out of your comfort zone and put on a little video and, and, you know, cut up a bar and make a shake. <laughs> it doesn't have to be this huge, like rocket science event, right? It can be really simple and really fun and play a game and whatever. All good. Jody. Sorry to chime in again, but no, I did a, I did a launch party before and the, my major takeaway was I did show a couple of videos, but I did a lot of talking again and realized that that was not at all duplicable. So I think that showing the video and keeping it simple and using the tools is a key. And that's again, something I'm going to try to keep getting better at instead of just talking all the time. Cause it's my team watches me and they're like, well, I can't do what you do. And that's yeah. not going to get me anywhere. So, <laughs> or them. No. And I, I totally get that. Cause I have people all the time go, well, you know, all this stuff. So how could I do that? Cause you know, all this and um, I didn't know all of it when I started, I had to learn it somewhere, but, um, I get it. I, I get that that's intimidating because you feel like you have to know everything. So totally. That's why the tools are there. So I will take my own advice and not be a tool. Cool. What time is it? What time is it? Oh, we're like at 10 after. So, um, in, instead of like moving, I was going to also try and like squeeze in some organizational systems, like daily method of operation stuff. Does anybody feel like uh, they have a really good one that they could throw out? And because you know, a lot of times we go, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then we get, we go on Facebook and forget why we're there. We, the phone rings, we forget what we were doing. Like, you know, the dog barks, the doorbell rings, the kids scream, like all those things happen and, and we totally lose our, our direction and our focus. So, um, does anybody have a really good way to rally back a really good system that they're using other than, um, just craziness like me? <laughs> hey Jojo, it's Anna. Um, this is something that I, if, if I used more often, I'd be more effective at it, but actually planning my night, uh, my day the night before so that I'm not waking up that day and, Oh wait, hold on. What should I do? Uh, okay. I'm going to do it. Cause I do, I get that squirrel or my kids need something or whatever. So if you plan it the night before and just do those little chunks of time, then it makes it a lot easier. Um, and you're not flying by the seat of your pants. Great or idea. Me, like pants on fire. <laughs> right. Great idea. Thank you. Eliza, what are you showing us there that you're holding that, up? That, that's literally like Anna, that's what I was doing as we were talking was writing out tomorrow. <laughs> and you're totally right. It works. Um, so one thing that I have been doing that has been helping me is a lot of the times during the day, I take pictures of things that I love or, or if something funny happens and I always feel like I have to use that right that minute and post it. But what I'm starting to do is I just take snapshots of my life or of something I love. And then at the end of the day, I sit down. I've been using Buffer more than Hootsuite to post, um, plan my posts. I then will go back and use those snapshots for the next day. Because really, at the end of the day, nobody knows if I went for a run on Tuesday or Wednesday, nor do they care. But the message is still the same, right? I'm using it for the same reason. And what I'm doing now is I just take snapshots of my, my day or something that I would normally post on and I save it. And then at the end of the day, I take about 10 minutes anyways to sit down and post, um, use my buffer. And now I am using like days of things from 
the day before because it works that that doesn't make me stop go on facebook post something and then i find myself scrolling and then you know like it's that rabbit hole right and so it's preventing me from getting into that rabbit hole a little bit can you explain what buffer is a little bit sure so Buffer is an app that you can download for free and you can go on and it takes you, it's a separate app. It's not on Facebook. And then you go in and you write down your, your posts and you can add pictures, you can add links, you can add videos. You can't add lives obviously, but recorded videos. And then you hit post or on Buffer, it's Buffer. And then you can choose what time that will post for you um, depending on what time you want. So, and you can customize it however you want to customize it. The option that I have, it's free, um, but I believe you can pay for the, the premium membership and that premium membership would allow you to post that same post in multiple groups at the same time. Um, the one that I have only allows me to go on my own wall. So then I still do have to go on to groups and post, but that at least I know I have, I try to do like seven, 12, three and eight. So it's done. And then all I have to do is go on and, and do, you know, I'll do a couple on our product page. I'll do a couple on a couple other pages, but that at least takes care of Sometimes I do it two days ahead of time. If I have an hour, I'll sit and do it. It really just allows you to, to plan out your, your posts so that you don't have to do them in real time, especially for people that are working. So Eliza, does Buffer allow you to post more than twice in a day if it's free? It does. Yeah, okay. I and I, it's never limited me to how many times I've posted. No. Okay, because it's limited me before, and I don't know. I can't figure out why. Okay, that's weird. Um, I I was using Hootsuite for a little while, but then it was doing this weird thing that it was always posting my pictures into a specific album, even though I told it not to. And so I just decided to try Buffer instead. I know there's something else called Post Planner, I believe, too. Um. And a lot of them, you do have better options if you pay for the premium. I haven't looked at how much it costs because then it will allow you to post. Um, Lisa Dunsky will be able to tell us more about that to post in within a group. Right now, it's just posting to my wall. But um, but yeah, I mean, even if you just want to play around with that, the free option, that's that's what I've been doing. And it looks like I. I tested it. So like I was thinking, well, let's just do it for a week and see if I still get people liking and commenting. Cause I didn't know if by posting in buffer, it was gonna not show up in news feeds as much because sometimes those third party things don't show up, but I get just as many likes and comments on my, if not more, because it's at the right time. And so are you finding that the times have changed? Because I know that we had certain times before. So what, what's the updated posting time now? I'm always, no, regardless, I'm always doing 7 a.m. That one's always very popular. The noontime one, so-so. And then like somewhere between like 3.30 and 5 tends to be like when people are like done with their day, they're looking at Facebook. That's a good one. Um, and then the weekends i find the evening posts tend to be like around eight o'clock that seems to be a good time to post um and uh you know from at least from my own experience i think this is different for everybody from posting um the things that get the most interaction will always be um something that is um what's the word innocuous, right? It's, that's probably the best word. It's the innocuous. I did one about post like the, the, the one food that you wish had zero calories and, but only post it with a GIF. You have no idea how many people like, and people keep coming back to look at it and laugh. Like it's a silly thing, right? But so some, I try not to do more than like one serious post a day. Cause I find that people just don't then just don't interact with me. <laughs> That was a great post. I even posted on that. 
Like I gotta I, throw I, something on there. I totally, I totally copied it. I'm, I follow, um, I'm on Jillian Michaels has a, a workout junkies page and I love it. And I, I stole it from somebody on there, but I thought okay. it was Rob and duplicate. That's what we do. Right. Awesome. So that was good tips. So plan the night before, plan the night before. What happens if you don't get everything done on your list? Do you eat a chocolate bar and bang your head against the wall or do you just give yourself grace and allow yourself to add it to the list the next day? Ah, there's the lesson, right? It's okay. Give yourself grace. So cool. Thanks. I'm excited to uh, try out these new ideas for our sip and sample and see how everyone else is going. So when you guys are doing yours, please take your, um, do some Facebook lives. Take some great photos of how your little stations are set up or what you've made. And um, oh, uh, one, one idea that we need to follow through with uh, during this week is to get everyone's email address. And if they want the recipes that we made, then they have to give us the email address so we can email them out. Because initially we were going to write them all out and hand them out as a gift, but that's way too hard, so we're not going to do that. Um, uh, that's so crazy. I have no idea where that's coming from. Oh, is that you, Mona? That was Miss Mona. It's okay. I don't know what happened. You unmuted. We heard all kinds of crazy stuff you don't want to know. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so all of you guys who are planning on doing your sip and samples, good for you. Now that you have oh, anybody feeling a little better about doing one that was kind of nervous before, feeling good? You know what? It's just a matter of getting everybody together. I think a lot of times we... We, we kind of got away from the belly to belly. We love doing this because nobody has to leave the house, but in the process of this, we've lost the touch, we've lost the connection, we've lost that, um, everybody getting together and giggling and you know doing all that stuff. So um, I, I think that there's definitely a place for this kind of thing in what we do. And so good for you guys and thank you for all your input, for all your suggestions. We can't wait to see everybody's parties. So please Facebook Live them, post them up, let us see the pictures, and um, we'll, we'll we're definitely gonna do some giveaways for you guys who are doing some doing some parties. I might have some cool swag. Ooh, it's like swag, Ooh, clothes, clothes, ISA clothes. Does that excite anybody? Yeah, I think so. So cool, awesome. All right. Let's end off this little meeting site. What time is it? My computer's going to fall on the ground. It does not. Okay. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Um, does everybody know that, <clears throat> that we're planning or sipping samples to submit all the information? Did everybody get their information submitted to corporate? Because corporate is giving swag. They have sent swag out to people that have planned parties. So. Yeah. Uh, make sure you, you get that information to corporate when you're sipping samples are at. They still may have some swag left or sending out. So. Yes, good point. Thank you for saying that. So um, if anybody, de I don't know the thing right off. Does anybody know the email right off the top of your head? Um, isogenic sip and sample. sample or something? at Isogenics Corp. It's, no, it's sip and sample at Isogenics Corp com. No, Jody and Eliza are shaking their head off. Okay. Um, can somebody type it into the chat box so we can have a seasonal sip and sample at isogenicscorp.com. And it's, it's also posted in Isogenics business like seven different times by okay. different cool. representatives. They're giving you, telling you all the things you have to submit to them so they can send you out your swag. So they want to okay. give you stuff. They want to give you stuff for your party. So take yeah. advantage of it. And Martha sent us some cool swag. So know that they are definitely doing that. So, um, and then UIA in Chicago, glad you guys are going, wish we could be there, but, um, so then we're rolling in from UIA in Chicago into our next big core four event, which will be New Year kickoff in Phoenix. Great time to come to Phoenix. 
So if you guys haven't looked into that plan, definitely get on the ball with that because that New Year kickoff next to UIA, I think, is my favorite event. But um, University in Action, I love. But New Year kickoff as far as – because it's a little bit smaller. It's not quite as crazy a celebration. It's, it's different. It's just different. So um, – Ah, uh, yes, Mary, I'm taking your tickets. I remember. Yes. Vanessa said, we don't have tickets. I said, yes, we do. Um, so I got your tickets. Um, do you have extra other than R2? You have extra other than that? Okay, so Mary has tickets for New Year kickoff. So before you go on the site and buy them, please get in touch with Miss Mary Pearson um, and get some of your tickets. All right? All right, everybody. Big kiss. Mm -hmm. Have an amazing week. See you next week.